A week from today, I will be doing a concert window event, and I will be streaming live um, while I do an underpainting for this painting right here. Now, I, I posted this on my website or my blog, and um, you can draw from this if you like, but you certainly don't have to. You can just listen to the broadcast if you like, and people will be able to um, type in uh, questions. So I hope you'll join me and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Now um, in a few minutes uh, or a few seconds here I'm going to be uh, demonstrating how to do my sketch for this, um, this motif. Feel free to draw whatever kind of sketch will be helpful to you but um, I hope this might uh, get you started and show you how at least how I do it. So the first thing I want to do is just start putting in this road. And I try to keep my lines fairly straight as my reference. And I decided I needed to see where my center point is, so I made a little grid. Now, that's basically to keep me away from the center and the center of the edges. So I just, I'm just you know, putting in a few little details to try to, you know, um, just get started. Sometimes it's hard to get going and you don't know where to start. So um, the best place for me is to start with the darkest area. In this case, that's going to be that tree. Because the tree is very close and it's an upright plane, as I've explained in other videos. And... Um, upright planes will be the darkest. So, and then objects that are dark, that are close, will be the darkest too. I use a variety of pencils. Right here I'm using a number two pencil, just your common number 2B. And um, in this case I'm using just three pencils. I use this Braille Drafting 314. And then this darker pencil, which is a number 9B, and it's a pentallic woodless pencil. It gets really dark, so I use that for my really, really deep tones. Now one of the things that you'll notice when I use the 9 value grayscale is that it's, it's pretty hard to get a pure black with a, with a pencil, so um, I do like to have that super black 9B pencil on hand when I really need to punch up my blacks. So I'm just trying to find the the um, silhouette of this tree and put in a little detail just to kind of help me define that shape. And one thing I notice as I'm drawing along is that tree, the way I've drawn it, it's a little truncated. It's a little bit stubby. So I will move the, the bottom of the tree down a little bit later here. But I'm just trying to lay in the basic structure without getting too detailed. Sometimes I, I do I'll get bogged down a little bit of detail here and there, but that's basically a bad thing. You want to try to avoid that. Now this um, section over on the right here is a bit problematical, so I'm going to add some cedar trees over here that are very common here out west. And I just need something to deflect the eye back in. The top of that little hill that I'm drawing on right now is leading out of the picture plane as well as the very sharp curve of the road. So that makes a very problematic compositional element. So I want to try to offset, if possible, that phenomenon. So I think that works. Um, I'll go back and revisit that. Uh, <clears throat> I do want to comment on the lines I was using on the road. Sometimes you can use too noodly of a line, and sometimes I think you need to you just use a straight line. Now I've sped things up here, and I, I kind of apologize for that because uh, this is abbreviating things pretty, pretty much, but I'm just basically laying in value here. So I just felt like uh, it was getting a little boring. It took me about um, about 40 minutes to do this video and 
to do this sketch and I filmed basically the whole thing. So um, you're going to see the whole sketch here, at least the second half of it. Now I'm just beefing up some lines. Uh, I'm checking values with my value finder. And I decided I really got to put in that black on the, on the tree or I'm not going to be able to relate all the other values to that. So I'm kind of putting a gray over the distant hills. The distant hills would be the next darkest thing in the composition because it's not an upright plane, but it's a slanted plane. So the light will be less. Of course, it's in the distance, so you have to compensate for that. And um, But it's still be quite dark. So I'm getting the base of that tree, that poplar, quite, quite dark now. Now some of the distant trees are very dark as well. Uh, there's a bit of rim lighting in this scene, so you, I, I didn't really pay too much attention to the rim lighting. You can get bogged down in your sketch on the rim lighting, and the rim lighting can be added in your painting very easily without a lot of, you don't have to belabor it or anything. So um, I've, I've kind of modified some of the fence posts because uh, the fence posts in my reference were way too rhythmical and even. So I wanted to make more of a syncopated rhythm there with the fence posts. Now I have put some very dark lines outlining some of the distant um, ridges and you can kind of obliterate that. Don't make those lines too dark or else you'll end up, um, you know, when you're trying to obliterate them. Now when I put a tone in next to that line, it sort of, the line will set in there a little bit better. So you can see how you can kind of do that. I don't use a lot of outlining in my work. Um, you know, Van Gogh did, but um, I don't. I tend not to do that. So I'm kind of like putting little glazes over little bit of areas, just just kind of skimming it over. I'm using that number two B on this one, just a standard number two pencil. And uh, that's, that's really good to control, just, you know, to put down a very light gray. So it works, works quite nicely. So I'm using a little um, paper napkin just to keep my hand off of, off of the paper, because uh, I would be smudging it pretty badly at this point. Yes, uh, the, the graphite's laying on the paper fairly lightly. I'm not really pushing it in too dark, especially on that road. So now one of the things you want to do is this is for a preliminary underpainting. So some of my strokes here are describing basically how I would put the strokes in with paint. On the road there, you can see it's very linear. Um, so I'm describing uh, that sagebrush over there, you know, fairly graphically. Um, now, I do suggest that you try to draw like you paint and and paint like you draw. If you want to see a really good example of this, go to the drawings of Van Gogh. You can just um, search for that on the internet and uh, you'll see that his drawings, his pen and ink drawings especially, are amazingly like his paintings. It's almost like he's describing stroke by stroke how he would uh, lay down the paint. So you do want to, uh, you know, it, it, you don't want to focus on it too much, but um, you know, it's something to keep in mind as you're as you're working on your sketches. I want to modify some of the silhouettes of the trees. My silhouettes were a little bit uniform, monotonous, so I wanted to try to fix that up a little bit. So here's the final piece, and I think it turned out pretty good. I think it's a pretty nice preliminary for a painting. Mm -hmm.